Hey guys, Cajun Reseller and Jenna back at you with another sourcing video. Today we're going to cover five or six thrift stores I went to in the last month or two. So let's get started with the first one. Here is thrift store number one. This is a Goodwill. Find this Olympus new in the packaging for $3.99. Always pick up Olympus stuff, especially the digital voice recorders. Also pick up that TP link. Usually that's like some kind of broadband router or something like that. Also pick up a Playmobil. It's not new. But for five bucks, and knowing that a decent amount of the accessories are in there, I decided to pick that up as well. Take a chance on it. You know, maybe I can part it out if it's not complete. Also, look at the breakables and other stuff. I found decent stuff at this Goodwill before. Uh, I used to go here at least once, once a, like once a day usually. And this is all the new racks. But today, I don't find anything on these racks. The Olympus was actually in the regular section. So as y'all saw in that first clip, I found three different items at that store. Sold one of them so far. The Olympus little camera or recorder thing sold within like a week of me getting it for $59.99 I believe I'll throw the comp up right here uh, the other thing was like some kind of wireless network adapter I don't know if I should have bought that I paid six for it I couldn't really find anything on it in terms of sales history but it was new and sealed so I picked it up I'm hoping to get 40 to 50 maybe maybe in that range uh, and then the Playmobil dinosaur it was sealed and they don't want you to open stuff at that store so it, uh, well it was tape shut, it wasn't sealed. So it wasn't new, but for $4.99, I figured I could, you know, at least do something with it. I looked up at the dinosaur that came out of that one was worth like 30, 25 to 30. Unfortunately, he's missing an arm once I actually opened it. So uh, now I don't know the value on this. I looked in there. Um, I guess I can pan to that. This is everything that was in there. Most of it is still in the bags new and sealed in the bags uh, and then some of it's not obviously like that it <laughs> just flung open but uh i might try and part this out eventually i haven't done anything with it yet obviously but yeah that's it for that store uh i was hoping it would all be new and sealed in here unfortunately it's not as you saw with the uh guy missing his arm but yeah that's it for thrift store number one that was a goodwill in baton rouge that i go to uh pretty regularly this is purple cow in baton rouge for some reason, this one day, I guess someone donated their whole Beanie Baby collection. It's funny because I just went through my mom's Beanie Baby collection and pulled out some that were worth a decent amount of money and sell those on Amazon. But I got this Mulan dog. Also got a, uh, that's a Carter's Baby to baby Plush. It's a Garfield. Reckon everybody recognizes him. Britney Spears as well. And then this uh, Maison Blanche plush and this really cool printer. I'll talk about all those in the summary uh, in a second. But yeah, here is the summary of what I found at this thrift store and what it's worth. So in this next clip, y'all saw a ton of Beanie Babies at this store. This is Purple Cow in Baton Rouge. I think they were like 50 cents to a dollar each. Those were all gone like the next day or two I went back. So if somebody was buying a ton of them, I wonder if they were buying them to flip them. Like maybe they have an antique booth or something and they sell them there pretty well. Uh, I don't have one of those right now. Thinking about trying to get into one, but I'm not sure. But uh, I did pick up a couple items uh, I'm also going to try and talk about a little bit of sell-through rate, give y'all a little bit of education on that. Uh, the first thing I picked up, or the first thing I'm going to talk about is this pink pig from Carter's. I actually haven't listed it yet, unfortunately. I think I took the pictures and never listed it, but as you can see right here, based on these screenshots, there were 10 listed and 3 sold, which means it's about a 30% sell-through rate, which isn't great. Uh, and if, since I haven't listed it, obviously it hasn't sold. But uh, yeah, that's I'm only talking about a couple of those. Unfortunately... Yeah, not a great sell through rate, but I still picked it up because the profit was like, you know, about 20 bucks or so. So for me, that was worth the pickup. Uh, I also picked up this Mulan dog. I don't think I did the sell through rate on that one, but yeah, this Mulan dog is probably worth around 10 to 15, not very much. Uh, Y'all saw, I'll throw a screenshot up right here of this Britney Spears bear that I sold on Mercari a while ago, but since Mercari keeps every sale that I've ever had, it's still there. <laughs> 20 bucks I sold this thing for. Uh, probably a year or two ago now but yeah i paid like a dollar for it like i said and then this maison blanche bunny i didn't see anything just like it but there were some maison blanche it's an old department store that had sold for decent money so that's why i picked it up like i said it's listed hadn't sold yet the last the best thing out of that was that hp 2140 uh, uh printer i think it is it's basically new and see or new open box uh, there was three listed and six sold, as I'm showing right here. So that's a very good sell-through rate, 200% uh, sell-through rate. So yeah, anytime you're looking on eBay, sell-through rate, you search the item, say HP 2140 printer, and you search, search, search based on new or used. So I was doing new for that because mine was new. And it would show three listed, and then you go and sort to sold, and it shows six sold. So that's a 200% sell-through rate. 
very good salty rate. I definitely picked that up. And I've gotten a couple offers on that. I got an offer right before I left to go to North Carolina. And I didn't want to accept, uh, or right whenever I was up in North Carolina, I didn't want to accept it and then wait uh, that long. Or I think I actually countered in, at the same price and said, this won't ship out until you know a week from now. And then they never responded. So I think that thing will sell pretty quickly. Uh, I've gotten a lot of interest in it. But yeah, that's it for this part of the video. At this store, all I pick up is this one golf club, spoiler alert, since there's like 43 seconds to this clip. But yeah, I pick up a golf club. Anytime I can pick up Ping, Scotty Cameron, Nike, or some other brands, Odyssey is also a good brand of golf clubs, I will pick them up. That lamp, if it wasn't so big, I might have picked it up. I think it was also, I don't remember if it showed a price right there, but I pass on the lamp, I pass on the little doggy. Also, I think I showed the plush, yes, I saw the plush. On this day, there was nothing there that I saw. They move that around a lot, actually, at this store. It's the same Goodwill that I went to in clip one. But, yeah, that's the breakable section again. Like I said in the past, I found stuff there before, but nothing this time. And here is a summary of the golf club. This clip, I only pick up one item. It's the uh, golf club Ping Karsten, I think it's a brand. Ping Answer 5 Karsten Company is the company that manufactured it. Not as good as I thought it was going to be. I think it's worth around 50 bucks, which wants to calculate the shipping that's going to cost if you, if i did 50 free ship i'd probably charge shipping on that one just because if you ship something that big to hawaii or alaska it's gonna be costing you a lot of money <laughs> ups isn't cheap when you go to hawaii or alaska so i'd probably do 40 plus shipping on that just based on the comps i was looking at i didn't find too much but it's still a little bit of profit i think I, usually golf clubs i pay like two bucks for at thrift stores so that was it for that clip and now we're back at the Purple Cow. I feel like I'm rotating between the Goodwill and the Purple Cow and not going to any other stores. I do go to other stores. I go to Samus and DePaul. I go to uh, some other small thrift stores that are in the area. But they, for some reason on this clip, this video is going to be Goodwill and Purple Cow, apparently. I find this bread maker. Sometimes I usually pass on the bread makers, but at this thrift store, this bread maker is probably worth 100 150 bucks. And I'll explain in a second uh, why this one's worth so much and why I picked it up. And you can always part them out as well. In this clip, I'm back at Purple Cow in Baton Rouge, and I picked up this bread maker, Toastmaster 1143S, I believe was the brand. Couldn't really find much information on that exact one. I searched uh, Terapeak, I searched Worth Point. There was no solds based on that exact model. There is a model 1193, which has sold pretty well for like 150 bucks. That's what I put my, I'm gonna put mine at, I think it's around 150. Maybe 135 plus shipping or something like that. But yeah, that's a good pickup there. I think I paid 10 or 11 bucks for that. And even if it doesn't work, which I need to test it still, I could sell the paddle, which is inside the bread maker, and the little compartment the bread goes in that's made in. You can usually part those out and make still make your money back and make a little bit of profit on it. So for that, it's always worth the pickup for me. Like I was at the bins the other day up in North Carolina whenever I was up there, and there were some bread makers, and always that those two piece parts were always taken out of it. So people would just take it, you know, take the paddle and the actual container the bread was in and leave the rest of it and then just make a profit off of that instead of having to pay the price for all that, which I think at this the Ben's in North Carolina was actually 49 cents for corded items, 49 cents per pound. So it actually isn't, it wasn't too bad at that location. I'm not sure about all the locations. Some of them just base it all on price, but yeah, that's not the point of this video. On to the next clip. Now we are finally at a different Goodwill. This is the Goodwill on Burbank, I think, in Baton Rouge. They always have some plush there. I got some Squishmallows, as you can see here. I think I got four, five Squishmallows. Also picked up that Build-A-Bear that you're about to see me show. It's the Indian's mascot, or was the Indian's mascot. I guess it's not the Indian's mascot anymore. And then I also pick up a big tote of Lego as well. So yeah, this whole thing of Lego right here, probably the best buy from this trip. And I'll explain a little bit on what each one of those is worth in the following clip. In this clip, y'all see me pick up a decent amount of plush. This is the same Goodwill I actually got Fergus the Frog at, who still hasn't sold, but I'm waiting for a good offer on him. I've gotten offers, but most of them were from low feedback and international buyers, and I'd rather not sell him internationally just because <laughs> whatever. But uh, some of the items I got at this thrift store, this guy is the Indian's mascot, or was the Indian's mascot. I don't know what their mascot is now. Well, it's the Guardians. I don't know what their mascot is, though. This guy is the Indian's mascot. It's Build-A-Bear. It is new with tags. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it when they uh, checked me out, but that actually says... I don't know if you can read that very well. It says $4.99. They charged me $9.99 for this guy. So there really isn't any profit there once you consider $9.99. Actually, there's his name, Slider. That's his name, is Slider. But this is a Build-A-Bear. 
Usually these builder bears are pretty good, but he was only worth around 15 to 20. So I might still make a little bit of profit on him. He, I think he's going to weigh over a pound. Uh, I can test that right now. <laughs> I got the scale right here. He is... No, he's actually under a pound. So maybe I'll still make some money on him. <laughs> but yeah, mascots are pretty good. Sometimes really good builder bears. I thought he was going to be better than you know 15 to 20, but... I believe that's what his comps were, even though he's really cool. And he might go up in value once the, uh, if they stop making him, obviously. But yes, I also got some other Squishmallows in there. I got Rosie the pig. She's actually back here. This one sells on Amazon for around 25 to 30 bucks, new with tags. And it is new with tags. I did my inspection that I usually do. Uh, sometimes I will sell items if they look clean to me and they look like they're in new condition and they are still new with tags. I'll sell them new on Amazon. I don't have any problem with that. I also got the other Rosie the Squishmallow. That one's not new with tags. Uh, and I don't think it was on Amazon anyways. It had like a bandana on it. That one probably sells for 15 to 20. And then I got those two dogs, which apparently had like a price tag of like three bucks, I think. Maybe. I don't remember what it said exactly, but from Dollar General. Those sell for 25 to 30. Those are a little bit older. So anytime you see Squishmallows that are from like 2018, 2017, they are, I think they're going to have more value because they're older and they weren't as mass produced as the ones that are being produced now so that's it for this portion of the clip some good profits for uh some plush so i kind of forgot about the lego that i picked up for 9.99 at that place uh these are some of the lego i got at this in that big tote that y'all saw i already sold some star wars lego for 35 or 30 or 35 or 40 bucks the minifigures here's jenna but uh yeah i just wanted to show y'all a quick recap of that it's just like some star wars some uh, dc and then some random boats and ships and stuff so i might just sell this bulk uh you can see there's batman in there as well but yeah some lego always good to pick up bulk lego especially whenever it's only 10 bucks as you saw in that clip whenever i first saw this ped pedal and steering wheel i thought it was gonna be worth a lot of money I haven't done enough research on it for sure. I don't think it's worth as much as I thought it was. But I picked that up at this thrift store. This is actually Goodwill and Walker. I also picked up this Sunbeam Open All Can Opener. It looks like like one of the over-the-counter or Space Saver ones. So that's why I picked that up. I haven't tested it yet. And this is like a couple weeks ago. But uh, I do pick it up. I think it's worth at least like the three or four bucks I paid for it. Looking at more stuff at this thrift store. They always have furniture in the back. So in this last thrift store, this is the Goodwill and Walker, Louisiana. I pick up the steering wheel and pedal. I've seen people sell those for 150 to 200 bucks. I don't think this one's worth that much. It's not as good a quality, but I just still think it'll bring around $100, maybe 50 to, somewhere in the range of 50 to $100, and I paid like 10 for it. So to me, that was worth the profit. Uh, those won't be too hard to ship. You just put it in a box. Put some bubble wrap around it, put it in a box, and maybe test it out before, obviously. And then I also got that little can opener. I love stuff like that. I looked up the brand. It seemed, I think it worked when I plugged it in in the store. And it's worth around 30 to 40 but I only paid, I think, 5 or 6 for it. Somewhere in that range. So it wasn't much of an investment. And usually those are, I don't know if it was a space saver or not. I can't remember if it said that or not on there. But yeah, I picked that up as well. So that's it for this video. Hopefully lots of knowledge for y'all in terms of items. Like y'all see me pick up plush. You see me pick up a printer. You see me pick up a bread maker. Like you, in your business, I think it's a mistake to niche da niche niche. Is that the right word? Niche down into a specific item. Like, sure, you can focus on one item and get that knowledge, but it's always good to look up everything. Like, I'll go into a thrift store. I mean, I don't I don't spend enough time probably in a thrift store. I am mainly looking at hard goods. Though. So I'll go and scan all the hard goods sections. I'll go to the plush, obviously. I'll look at the hats. Hats are generally pretty cheap and can bring 15 to 20, and that's a good profit whenever you're spending less than a dollar. And then I'll look at the shoes sometimes. I should look at shoes more often. And then, you know, clothes is my last resort. <laughs> if I'm hanging out with someone, uh, you know, another reseller that likes clothes, then I might look at clothes. But if I'm by myself, I rarely look at clothes. Unless something catches my eye or there's a new rack of clothing that just came out, which I know hasn't been gone through by the masses of people. So I'll go and look at that one. But yeah, that's it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like. Comment with your favorite item that I found. Mine's going to be that printer because it's new in box. It's already packaged up, basically. I just have to put it in another box and put some padding around it and make sure it's safe. So, yeah. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thanks for watching.